A woman staying at an Airbnb discovers that the house she has rented is not what it seems. Barbarian is up next on Inside Movies. This episode is brought to you by Fantasy Quest. Hey, I'm George McHale. And I'm Andrew Buckley. We're so excited to tell you about Fantasy Quest. It's a brand new fantasy series featuring beloved literary worlds and characters that you know and love dearly. Except we really twisted them up, turned them on their heads, and even went as far as to kill a lot of them. Oz and Wonderland are in the midst of a war when a stranger from a distant planet arrives in a world he doesn't comprehend. Featuring murderous twins Tweedledum and Tweedledee, a bloodthirsty Bambi, a drunk Merlin, the bumbling King of Oz, the Scarecrow, and a brave tin man mounted atop a ravenous lion. Illustrated in beautiful detail by award-winning artist Rags Morales and Haley Renee, Fantasy Quest will take you to places you only think you've visited before. We have a murder's row of incredible talent for our varied covers, including Ali Garza, MJ Hiblin, GMB Komichuk, Zach Schuster, Vince L. Tabanis, and of course, we have covers from our series artist, Rags Morales and Haley Renee, including an exclusive variant that will only be available through this campaign. We're so excited to bring this project to life, and we hope you really dig it. Hey, guys. Uh, welcome to another episode of Inside Movies. Uh, today, we're talking Barbarian. Uh, this was just a movie that came out in 2022 that we all really loved. And even though it's a bit late, uh, we just wanted to review it and, and talk about it. So uh, today, I'm joined by... Writer illustrator GMB Kamichuk, novelist Andrew Buckley, and the editor in chief of uh, Merck Publishing, Murphy. Uh, so let's get into it. What's the good? What do we like about Barbarian? I have had the opening act of this film happen. And so I was 100% in. And I managed to see it having not seen a trailer, having not seen anything about it. And uh, my friend, uh, Justin Curry, known the world over as Chasing Artwork, uh, who all travels with me, and we're often in a B&B, said, don't find anything out about this movie. Just watch it in the dark right now. I got this text message. And when I get those kind of texts from him, I usually follow the instructions, and I was not disappointed. This is the perfect watch it alone in the dark movie. Oh, so good. I have... I love this movie i was introduced to it kind of the same exact way so have you seen barbarian yet just watch it just watch it and now the only thing i will tell somebody if they haven't seen it is it is bonkers <laughs> and that's not a word that i normally use but this movie is bonkers if you have not watched it yet pause and go watch it yeah don't Come get this movie this ruined for you. go yeah. watch it first don't let us ruin it this movie is bonkers Okay? Okay. Spoilers time. We don't even normally do that, but this one, I'm doing it. We all kind of found this movie, or at least two of you, three of us found this movie the same kind of way, where it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go see Barbarian. It's more like somebody, somebody. I think my friend in New York messaged me and said, hey, did you watch Barbarian yet? I'm like, no. Is it? And he goes, like, it's on Netflix. You have to go watch it right now. So my kid and I watched it, and yeah, it was like that thing where it's like, oh my god, this is such a good movie. Why don't I, do I not know about this movie already? Like what happened in the marketing or the early but, word of mouth from theatrical release that I didn't get to know about this movie. But whatever happens, that is literally how a cult classic is born. You hear about it. You're not told by some big ad that this is the movie not to miss. The people who have seen it, be, felt it and been affected by it immediately reach out to people that they want to share that experience with. And if you're a horror movie fan, you know that these days that is fleeting because the trailer gives every fucking thing away. Mm -hmm. So having a movie not ruined is delicious. That was so nice that the marketing for this movie didn't spoil it. Um, Cause, and all it revealed was the setup and the setup's great. It's, you know, two strangers stuck in an Airbnb together. And uh, Zach Kreger, the director, he just expertly turns the, the tension to, to 11, uh, especially once they go downstairs to investigate. Oh, yeah. Well, so the, the casting of this was perfect. So the, the main actress, I, I don't think I, I don't think that I was aware of her, but uh, having um, Bill Skarsgård as the guy in the Airbnb, they set him up so 
perfectly to like, you're like, oh, he's going to snap. Like this guy is, I know that he's the guy. And then he gets his head just smashed against a wall. And at that moment it was like, oh shit. And then we cut to sunlight. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> that hard cut was when I was like, what is happening? And it just like I, that type of hard reset in a movie like this is so it's so unusual. And it was so it was done. It was just done so well. Like that's such a hard tra transition to pull off. And they just oh, my God. And then Justin Long again fantastic casting someone that you feel like you're like wow when's the last time i saw him in something and this guy that's normally this like kind of bumbling like sweet nerd is just this piece of shit like i i bought it i loved it and i so wanted tim to die hard cuts hard cuts to weird places in the story structure is usually something where david lynch will do it and it's a perfect lynch move it felt like that it felt like a david lynch cut except that the film was telling such a honest and straightforward narrative until that cut that I had complete faith that no matter how little off track it was, it was going in a good direction. And yeah, man, did I hate that guy. I hate that fucking guy so much. Why do you think it worked in this though? Like any other movie that you see where it has like a pretty linear storyline and then it gets to that one hard cut where it takes a, just a massive right turn like that is usually so jarring in the movie that it doesn't work. Why does it work in this? Why do you guys think it works in this movie? Like it does perfectly. It's beautiful, but why? why? The reason it answers it? a question. The... It's the actual answer to the question you have. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's like how is this place here? And you start to reveal like what is going on, and and the cut actually leads to, in a sense, like the true villain of the story, who is yeah. Justin, Justin Long. <laughs> So yeah, it, it all it all makes sense in the end. I I think like just the the confidence of the the, the storyteller and uh, the writer and the director to to make that decision to just abandon what's a great movie. When that happened in the theater, I was like upset. Uh, I went and saw like <laughs> I love going to the movies. I probably go like every week, and uh, I was there on like opening night for this one by myself. In I don't know, I was at some I was on some convention on the road. And I just went and I blew my mind and I just started telling everybody I knew about it too. I'm like, you got to see this. Um, and it, I think it works. I think it works because it sets up the end. It sets up the mystery of what's going on and it starts to explain it. And then it, and then it all ties together at the end. So you have to make this detour. And there's a great, if I may, there's a great metatextual part in the writing and the editing of this film of what is the taboo, right? Like we see the woman, in the house and the male figure and the specter of male power over a woman and how dangerous that can be and how vulnerable she is and all of those things. And then that character doesn't make the choice, right? He is a good guy and then he gets his head smashed in. Uh, but then we see the villain's version of that, like from the past, what that other person who sees and wants and takes and does. And it is horrific in a way that it, the monster isn't even that scary. The idea of how the monster was created absolutely petrified me because it's based on lived experiences, you know, like fucking awful things like that do happen. Um, man, terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Well, and as far as, as far as, you know, the notes of like what, you know, like what, what's the point? What is it? What are the, what are the themes of this? It has a lot of really political type especially like in in today's like today's day and age there's a lot of things as far as you know like like the way that you know the the, the me too movement and you know the the uh po the way that the police handle situations like there's a lot of those situations that are a part of this movie but they're done really well and very realistically so it doesn't feel at all preachy it all just feels real and i think that was that was just another thing that made this kind of a, a next level horror film is that the the reality of of, of a genre that usually is either very campy or kind of hard to believe, you know, like you really have to suspend your disbelief. You do not with this, like this, this disgusting giant naked woman who has just, just terrifying strength. Like outside of maybe like throwing an entire human being out of the hole, most of the things that she did, like I believed, cause she's down here crawling around for her entire life. Like, yeah, she probably would have, 
just insane strength and then and then to find what is the true evil even deeper in this cave who's this just this old man and the moment when justin long like puts in the tape and then starts saying like oh you're disgusting like how could you do this it's just like you just want to oh, fucking I know. punch him so much and then it's like he starts to question himself and then he throws her off the water tower i just i'm, I'm rambling at this point i just love this movie so much well, and the casting of so Richard Blake is so great as the uh, the father of the of the woman who's kind of the monster of the movie, and and I always love it when he shows up in things because he's just got such a creepy vibe to him. But I think uh, Justin Long, if if it had been like I don't know, like a Josh Dumal or somebody who you could like kind of feel like a a, a bit of a greasiness maybe coming to, from them, uh, but Justin Long is like the nicest guy in the world. You know what I mean? Like so to see him like and you and you and you're instantly rooting for him right like he's singing that song and you're like this guy's great oh he's probably going to be the hero that's going to come along and save her or whatever you know and then nope he's a piece of garbage and and you're wondering like all along like well maybe you know because he's like denying these accusations it's like well maybe he didn't do it and then he like he admits to the bar that he's just terrible when he's yeah she with said his no at first but oh Ugh. yeah and it's like oh no you're terrible right and then it does that horror movie thing where you know they deserve it and they've told you they deserve it the filmmakers have told you this person deserves it and we're gonna punish them that's the promise of the movie and then instead he seems to be getting a one up on everyone through the rest of it. <laughs> so that the escalation is not that a crazed, inbred, monstrous mother woman is chasing and trying to make them suckle at her breast. The the escalation is that he's gonna betray her at every step and do something even worse. Like, oh, amazing. <laughs> And we, I don't want to, I don't want to sidestep over the, the, the comedy that this movie also has is, is very well fit into the rest of the horror, the scene of, so he's, he comes back. He's like, he's going to lose all his money. He's lost his job. He needs to sell this house. He finds this creepy <laughs> fucking basement and then starts <laughs> measuring <laughs> and as the door opens. He's like, and then he just keeps measuring, and the next scene is going by, and he sees these cages, he's like, and then he measures by the cages. Like, that was just, it was comedy gold. <laughs> and you need it in a movie like this. You need to have a place to release that tension, or else you can't build it again. You know, it's the shepherd tone of your emotion. You just have to keep building it. So if we don't have him to laugh at how stupid and awful and terrible his choices are, Actually, the movie loses its power, right? But it, 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 but it does give the viewer a chance to like sort through the different layers of evil that this movie pr represents oh, yeah. or presents, rather. Like, I mean, it's so nicely done that you're like, okay, well, there, Bill Skarsgård is evil because the perception is that he is. We, I mean, it's the one thing that the trailer did do was like set it up like this is this is the guy you're gonna hate, and then you don't. And it introduces something else, something more sinister. And then it introduces just as long, like um, George said, where it seems like he's a nice guy and he quickly like nosedives and becomes more and more of a piece of shit. And then you're kind of sorting through those layers. And then you find the evil guy in the bed who started all this shit and find out the mother is just a tragic production of his evil. Like it's that that amalgamation. And, and Andrew, I have to give credit to you. You have to go back even to the very beginning, the title of the film. Barbarian, yeah. Is a switch like when when just when my friend Justin was like, "Hey, you should see this movie, Barbarian." I was like, "A barbarian movie at last!" Like I was literally <laughs> excited. <laughs> and then I was like, "Wait, what is this?" Like uh, as far as like subverting uh, expectations too, you have the the kind of homeless guy that you know you think he's trying to attack her, and, but he's really warning her not to go in that house. So bad things happen in there, and he ends up being a good guy, even though you think he's not. Yeah, and then his like wisdom role, wrong, right? He's just, he has no he has no actual knowledge of what's going to keep them alive. You just got lucky. She's oh. she's never found me up here until now. Yeah. Dead, <laughs> dead, <laughs> instantly dead. Yeah. Uh, but let's get into the bad. Not that there is a lot uh, with there's this one. There is nothing. <laughs> I I have one thing. I have one thing. And okay, just turn him off. Just turn him off. Mute yeah. him. Turn his camera off. All right. So. You know, I've worked with uh, adults with developmental disabilities for over 20 years. And so 
I thought about like how to word this. And the depiction of the mentally disabled as naked maternal murderers is not great in a politically correct way. But to me, it's much more scary than uh, something magical or alien. So in saying this, I don't want a world where everything is politically correct and we can have no bad guys because if whoever that bad guy is represents other people. So it's, it's a nitpick, but at the same time, it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's a difficult situation. It so, is I'm glad you brought that up, George. That's actually, I hadn't thought of it. I've been uh, enamored by the sparkle and zazzle of this great horror film, but that's an interesting point. Could you make the argument that she, the mother figure, let's just call her the mother, is as is actually another victim in this story, though? And not she is doctor, right. Absolutely. That, so oh. then, is that portrayal and the fact that we've actually brought it up in this review of a horror film, maybe is uh, to your point that the film is more clever at layering the um, expectation of what you think is evil and challenges that. Hmm. Well, and and kind of on that point, you know, once you get to like get to know, you know, you get back into the basement you find the the woman that had, you know, that that opened opened the movie has been trapped down here in this hole. You know, she is she has gotten to know the mother. Like she knows what she wants. She knows how to act. Like she's, you know, it's it's there's there is a little bit of um, not method, but like there is there is something there. There is wants and there are needs of the mother that 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 she has been able to kind of uh, realize and 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 use to to keep herself alive. And then at the end you know, when, when Justin Long finally, God fuck his soul, gets his head torn apart, <laughs> you know, she, she, you know, kind of like touches, touches her, her face. The mother touches the, the woman's face, like, like the woman in the video does and kind of like says like, you know, like, it's like this way of saying like, I love you. You're my baby. And I don't think that, I don't think that the, the main character enjoyed killing her. I think that she knew that she had to. And I think that she just felt like it was a little bit of a mercy for her, for both of them. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I think that, as far as a monster goes, they, they did find a way to like humanize her. Yeah. I think that absolutely the mother character is a victim. Like the, the way that her father, you know, raised her is just obviously barbaric and, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and if she had been raised under other circumstances, I'm sure she would have, you know, she obviously had caring and nurturing aspects to her. And she could have been a really nice person if she was raised properly, right? So it's a uh, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult situation, but I think it's uh, you know at the same time, like I said, I want to have villains in movies, so villains have to represent somebody, you know, they have to be somebody, and so this in this case, it's a disabled person. Um, so with that, let's get into the skinny. Uh, let's give our final grades uh, for Barbarian. Uh, I give this five disturbing breastfeeding scenes out of five. It's one of the best horror movies I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Sorry. <I> just, <laughs> what is wrong I'm with just you? picturing the graphic that George will have to put on the... I think that um, I would give this movie... Um, it's it's five stars. It's an A+. Plus. I don't even have a quip for it. it. Just as a horror movie goes, I think it's flawless and you should watch it. Uh, I'm going to give this uh, 2,100 basement square feet that technically don't count out of 2,100. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Possibly my favorite movie that came out last year. Definitely my favorite horror movie. Uh, I'm going to give it an A+. Uh, this is a new horror classic, in my opinion. It's expertly written, directed, and acted uh, with some great twists that I didn't see coming. So, yeah, for sure. Um Make sure you uh, check out Andrew's website. There's a link in the description of this video. Uh, and until next time, peace.